Hello everyone. Uh, this week's lectures will be about a, another programming language called SQL, SQL, which as you can see stands for Structured Query Language. Um, as the name suggests, this is going to be a very different kind of programming language from Python. Python is a general purpose programming language uh, which we can use for writing a wide variety of applications, including web browsers, music players, games, um, as well as the data science applications uh, that we have been uh, working with thus far in the class. SQL, on the other hand, is a highly structured language meant for querying databases. So, <clears throat> You may have heard of MySQL databases or SQLite databases, Microsoft SQL. Um, there's a great number of database products available that are based upon structured query language. Um, and for this reason, um, knowing SQL is more or less a mandatory skill for any data scientist to have. Uh, it is the most requested skill in data science job openings. Um, so it behooves us to cover it. Um, we'll find many of the concepts and even some of the language is familiar from our work with pandas because both uh, SQL databases and pandas assume a tabular data model. They assume we're working with data tables. And actually when it comes to SQL, um, this is formalized uh, in what's called the relational data model. And a lot of people have thought very hard about um, how data should be organized in tables for optimal compu computation um, and what kind of uh, effects that has on the language. Um, now, I don't expect you to become experts in the theory of relational data models, um, but this topic goes quite deep if you're interested in exploring it further. We'll be focused on simply uh, creating a SQLite database um, and learning some of the uh, basics of creating tables, um, managing data in those tables, and running uh, various transformations and aggregations similar to the way we did in Python. Um, now, you might notice we're working in a Python notebook, and to work with SQL, I'm just skipping ahead a little bit, we'll be using what's called an IPython extension uh, called SQL. Uh, so there is a SQL IPython extension uh, for Jupyter Notebooks. And any cell which begins with this SQL magic, so these percent signs I mentioned long ago, many lectures ago, are called magic commands. And uh, any cell that begins with this SQL magic will be interpreted as containing SQL code. So we'll be making use of this extension uh, quite a lot throughout the notebook in order to execute our SQL code. So let's begin with considering um, a kind of simple example of some data that could be generated by, say, an online store. Um, and we have here a table of data containing customer names, uh, customer IDs, order IDs, product IDs, price, delivery address, and billing address. So customers may make multiple orders. So we see here Vidya uh, had two different orders, uh, 64989 and 64921. And of course, each order might contain different products, which may or may not have different prices. 
Uh, and of course, orders generally will go uh, be billed to the same address, um, but they may have items which are shipped to separate addresses. For instance, if uh, we're purchasing a gift for someone else, we maybe um, send it to uh, wherever they live directly rather than having it shipped to us. So this should look familiar. Um, we dealt with data tables in pandas. And in pandas, we would have an index, a special uh, column of labels for each row. And we would have column names, uh, or the various series names, uh, labeling the columns. In SQL, we're going to introduce slightly different terms. Um, so each row in a SQL table is referred to as a relation. But it's the same idea as when we were working in pandas. Each row represents a single record, object, event, phenomena, something that we observe. And each column represents some characteristic of that record. So roughly each row in this table represents some purchase. And the different columns describe the properties of that purchase. Whoops. So each row, of course, was the each purchase was purchased by some customer who has some customer ID. The purchase belongs to some particular order and is of some particular product, which has a price. It gets delivered somewhere and we bill someone at some address. Um, just a point of clarity, uh, these stars are supposed to indicate that these addresses would maybe have roads and house numbers, uh, but we're just showing here for brevity's sake, um, the city and country. But there would generally, of course, be more information, the complete address here. So these stars are st standing in for that missing information. Um, and the properties, the columns, the different columns, we call those attributes uh, in the context of relational databases. So we have relations and attributes. And in order to, you know, looking through this table, we might notice there are a decent number of places where we are repeating information. We have repeated customer names, repeated customer IDs as well, repeated order IDs, uh, and repeated billing addresses, since those each customer has a particular billing address. It is common practice within SQL databases to reduce uh, the redundancy in our tables by using a technique called database normalization. And again, this relates to that relational data model. And just looking through this Wikipedia article, we can see uh, quite a lot of thought goes into uh, how a, the tables of a database should be designed. Again, we're not going to go deep into the theory of relational databases or the relational data model, but we can at least have a look at this table and think about how we might break it up into several tables in order to minimize data redundancy. So, a lot of the repeated data here has to do with particular customers, customer names, IDs, and billing addresses. So rather than having um, rows where we repeat the various customer IDs and information, we might have a customers table where we have one entry per customer and that each row represents a customer. So here, We've broken up, uh, in fact, the tables even into more pieces, but we start with that customer table. 
So here's our customer table, and we have one row for each customer, Omar, Stuart, NVIDIA. And instead of having duplicated names and IDs, we have each of them just a single time. Then we have our products, the, possible, the different possible products someone might be able to purchase in our store. This is just, of course, a selection from all the products that could be purchased, but it's all the products that show up in our table here. And again, since uh, multiple people bought product 103, we reduce a little bit of redundancy in the price and product ID information by only having that product listed once in the product table. And finally, we have our order table. Now, with the orders, we can't reduce redundancy much because each order might consist of multiple items. And uh, we're going to have some redundancy here just to simply indicate uh, all the items belonging to a given order. So each row here is a purchase akin to our original table. So we don't reduce the number of rows in this case, but we got rid of some of the columns. We no longer need to carry the price column because we could look up the price from the product ID. We don't need the customer names or billing addresses because we can look those up from the customer ID. If we looked at all the tables, all three of these tables we've made now, and counted up how many cells there are in total, we would find that there are 47 cells. Originally, we had a table consisting of seven columns and seven rows, giving us 49 cells. So we've reduced the amount of data we're storing from 49 entries to 47 entries. And while this is not a very dramatic improvement, if this were a real database from a real online store, we would undoubtedly have many more products, many more orders, and many more customers. And as the database scaled out, the repetition of customer names, um, IDs, billing addresses, etc., and prices would take a bigger and bigger toll. And we would see more and more uh, of an efficiency kind of improvement by factoring the tables out this way. So this is the basis kind of, of how uh, our approach to the data is in a relational database. We keep different types of data in different tables, which is not so different from the way we worked in Pandas in the DW mini project, where we have a prescriptions table, a practices table, and a chemical table. And it's only when we need to compute, say, something about the prices of the orders that we join in the price column to the orders table. If we don't need to know anything about price by customer, and we only are interested in, say, what is the average total price of an order, we don't need to deal with this customer information at all. We can simply join price to the orders table. And again, we cut down a bit on the amount of uh, computation or kind of data baggage we're carrying around when aggregating price data on order ID rather than on anything relating to customers. So with that high-level overview of relational databases, we're going to move on to some examples, to implementing this example, in fact, in SQL, and we'll uh, get more acquainted with the language. That'll be covered in the next video.